okay, we have a fresh install of Server 2012, and we also installed the Active Directory domain services role, Pro promoted it to become a domain controller, and now we're ready to set up an OU structure here. Everybody has their own way of setting up their OU structure, and there's a, there's a lot of different ways to do it. For example, like at a school district, I would set it up differently because kids float around. The school districts are kind of tough. Uh, for this one, let's go ahead and uh, let's say it's going to be a hospital. And the hospital has their main hospital in Illinois. And then they have a couple outside clinics. And to make it simple, I'm gonna I'm gonna say we have a there's a California uh, clinic and then also an Oregon clinic. I don't want to create anything on the root. Now this is just a personal preference. You can do it however you like. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click on not creative internal. So like new organizational unit. Now what I like to do, let me move this over here. I'm gonna create just the main OU here where I'm gonna put all my sub OUs. And this one I'm gonna name it not creative space OU. And the reason I'm capitalizing it is I want it to kind of stand out. So when I'm quickly opening up uh, Active Directory users and computers, I can see it real quick. Uh, this protect container from accidental deletion, leave that on. Um, it's easy to accidentally drag this to somewhere else or right click and delete. So just leave it on. And there's a way to, to undo that. And I'll show you that later. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK. Click up here, hit F5 so it refreshes. So now you can see this is our main OU. So let's just create, let's just set up a basic structure here. I'm just going to create some, some more OUs. Right click, new, OU. Computer joins the domain, which is going to happen a lot. I want it to go in a certain OU. I don't want it to go into the computer's OU. I don't want it to go here to this one. I want it to go into my own. It, just in case there's some group policy stuff going on that I want installed um, upon the first reboot or whatever. So I'm going to, I'm going to put an underscore so it goes to the top sorts out to the top. I'm just going to call it WDS for Windows Deployment Services because I'm also planning on anytime we um, image a machine we're going to be using WDS and that's basically it's going to be put right into there into this WDS folder. So let's hit OK. Let's do another one. Alright let's call this one Groups. And what I want to put in there are security uh, distribution groups. So things as such as like software groups, you know, I want, let's say we're deploying Office 2010. And w actually, that's probably a good video. We'll, we'll probably do that as well. If we deploy Office 2010 and we only want it to go to um, applied to a certain group, okay, we're going to name that group something like, you know, Office 2010. And then whenever a computer needs that like maybe it's the CEO of the company. He wants Office 2010. We just add his computer to that group. Simple. So it'd be nice to just kind of put all the groups in one location. Okay, let's do another one. New OU. Let's call this one. Let's do. Let's do our main hospital. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say Illinois Hospital. All right. Now in here, it's gonna be pretty big. Place and but you know we'll just we'll just say there's a couple floors. Let's do a uh, let's do a basement. Oops. And in the basement, who's in the basement? Let's say us. Information oops, systems and I can't type this morning. It's freezing cold out and I have the window open. I don't know why. So we're, what else do we have? We have a first floor. Uh, what's on the first floor? Let's say surgery. Alright, and what else do we have? We have a second floor. Let's do that. And what's on the second floor? Let's say administration. You know, such as the CEO and his secretaries and whatnot. Alright, so let's, and we have some outside clinics, so now this one, you know, depending on how many outside clinics we have, and, you know, we really only have, let's just say we have two of them. But let's go ahead and create an OU for the outside clinics. Just to keep things neat. You know, you, you, don't, want, you, don't, you don't want to create a bunch of sub-OUs. You really don't. But, you know, let's say you have five or six, you, you know, different clinics outside. Why not just throw them in here? So this one, let's do California fingers are frozen. Let's do another one. Um, what did I say? Oregon? All right. Now, let's also create one for our servers because we want a place to, to 
put all our servers. So we're going to have a ton of servers, okay? Now, what kind of servers are we going to have? Let's do, because we may have, uh, let's say we have an exchange server, which we are going to, that's on my to-do list here. Now, let's say, um, you know, if, if you only have a few servers, 5, 10 or so, you probably don't need to put them in their own OUs. Uh, but if it's a large organization, let's say you have a few different exchange servers, you know, and then also let's say we have some SQL servers. You know, maybe you have four or five SQL servers. It'd be nice to put them all in one OU. Um, and let's, last but not least, let's do file, uh, let's do print servers because I have some things I want to show you with that as well later. So we just need print. All right, let's, let's go with that. That's our basic OU structure. It's not very complicated. It's a good starting point. Um, and we can adjust it as, as we go on. And then what we'll end up doing as well for computers and users is dumping them all in, like, let's say for administration. We will put, like, the CEO's user account in here. And then also we'll put his computer account in here. So we'll have, like, you know, all the administration users and computers. Is that best practice? I don't know. Um, it works for like where I work right now and uh, you may want to separate them out with their own you know here let's do this let's do organization unit with uh, let's do computers and then also users I mean you may want to split them off like that for whatever reason I mean maybe to apply group policies and it just makes it a little cleaner as well but you know that's up to you now remember I showed you like let's try to delete this it says you do not have su sufficient privileges. It's protected. So what we want to do is go to View, Advanced Options, and we have to drill back down to that. And where was it? Dun, 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 second Floor Administration. Right-click it, go to Properties, go to Object, uncheck this Protect Object, hit Apply, OK, and then we can delete it. And if, if you were to view that without the Advanced Options, uh, here... Uh, hospital. You don't have that tab. That's why we have to go and view the advanced features. It's cold. My, my brain's not working. It's a valid excuse, right? Okay, so I'm happy with this structure. And I think we can move forward with... Um, future videos and uh, see what we can do from here.